I think it's time. <laughs> it is time. And a very good evening. It is 7 o'clock, and we welcome you all to the March 17th, 2014 regular meeting of the Bedminster Township Committee. Uh, we have our full compliment on the committee here, and Mr. Sordillo, welcome. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'd like you all to please, oh, let's have the Open Public Meeting Act statement. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, adequate notice of this meeting of the Township Committee was sent to the Courier News in Somerville, to the Burnersville News in Burnersville, and to all subscribers. Also posted here at the Township Municipal Building on January 6, 2014. If you'd all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First on the docket tonight is we have meeting minutes. We have so four sets of meeting minutes tonight. February 17th, our budget work session number four. February 24th, our budget work session five. March 1st, budget work session six. That was our Saturday of fun and the March 3rd regularly scheduled meeting here. Does anybody have any comments or questions, additions or subtractions to the meeting, to the minutes? Did you get mine? Yeah, there were actually two minor changes to the February 24th um, minutes. One was I had uh, Committee Woman Freeman listed as present at the 24th session. She was not. And um, uh, also under, under comments, Mr. Payne brought to my attention that I think I listed uh, under public comments, we were talking about uh, health care, and I put down health care providers as opposed to health care insurers, just the change of one word in the last paragraph. But that was all. Any seconds? I'll second it. No, I mean, any second okay. comments? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'll take a motion. You all can right, be. I'll take the motion. All I'll right. Any motion. seconds to the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Second. Sorry. All right. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye except Aye. for the 24th of February. <clears throat> Thank you. Permits and raffles, we only have one on the docket tonight. A uh, social affair permit for SAFE in Hunterdon on uh, April 4th, 2014. That is 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. at the Fiddler's Elbow Country Club. Questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I'll second. Again, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And it looks here we have a uh, special presentation. And I will, Ms. Sullivan, if you want to tell us who we have. Um, Adam Mermelstein from Treetop Developers, LLC, is here this evening. Um, his company is looking into a uh, potential purchase of Pluckman Park in Pluckman. And Mr. Mermelstein, if you'd like to come up to the podium and uh, address the Township Committee. And that is mic it, should be on. It is on. Okay. Can I ask you a question? What's our role? We have to approve the sale because <laughs> I, I turn to Mr. Sordillo, who's helped with this in the, in the past. Yes, there, there's deed restrictions um, associated with this with, in connection with the affordable housing and age restrictions as well. And what we have done in prior transfers is we have approved them uh, under the, the, the restrictions. Uh, there's agreements where we have to consent to any transfer. And so what we've done in the past is we've adopted a resolution consenting it. And in that resolution, we've actually made it into a deed restriction itself where the purchaser had signed off on that and recorded it of title so that it was clear that the deed restrictions, the new owners now are abiding by the, the existing deed restrictions and they will continue in, in, uh, in pursuant to the agreement. Do we have any other obligations or responsibilities in terms of, you know, any requirements that we can put in? In terms of you know parking, lighting, you know the things we've been having. Not not unless with. they're they're going in for additional approval approvals for the planning board. Uh, if mm -hmm. they're doing any site work, then uh, then uh, those those issues can be addressed and, and, and imposed. Mm -hmm. uh, but if for just the simple purchase, there's really no uh, authority to impose any conditions, mm -hmm. uh, except if we just deem that they're not uh, appropriate to hold uh, hold the or. or purchase the property under the under the prior agreements then we could not consent but otherwise it's more of a formality to make sure that the deed restrictions continue now I know there's an age limit is there an income limit 
Yes, this, these are affordable housing units, so there is an income limit. That specific, uh, I don't know which one it falls under, whether it's, a, I, I apologize this evening, I don't remember if it's a, a, a medium, low, or very low income uh, limit, but there, will, there is an income limit. So that's all regulated by yes, one the, terms of the rent and all that? Yes, those are all set forth okay. in the agreement. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Mermelstein, welcome to Bedminster. And Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for having me. First of all, oh. Yeah. Um, my name is Adam Ermelstein. I'm one of the two principals of Treetop Development. Treetop Development was formed in 2005. Originally, we were, I don't know if you care about my whole history, but I'll just make it short. Um, we were formed as a development company to uh, build ground up condos, mostly in Hoboken, Jersey City, in uh, Williamsburg and Greenpoint. We then moved into the city. My prior background before developing uh, condominiums was in property management. As we saw the fall of the market in 2007, 2008, I decided to go back to my uh, I guess original roots and focus more on the multifamily housing. So we started purchasing um, primarily in New Jersey in about 2010. We also started purchasing in Manhattan. Uh, currently, we have a, a market rate portfolio of uh, 3,000 units, and that is in Manhattan as well as northern New Jersey. Um, in northern New Jersey, in we have about, uh, it, it's roughly split half and half, so we have about 1,500 units in Manhattan and then the other 1,500 units in northern New Jersey. Uh, at the same time, about 2010, we also started going into the affordable game. Uh, we started buying uh, project-based Section 8 deals, and that's you know, sort of throughout the country, it's under a different uh, company name called the Aspen Companies. Uh, there we manage currently about 3,500 um, apartments and, you know, most of our units are local, but we have, well, that's, that's not true actually, we have about five or 600 local um, project-based Section 8 deals. And then they pretty much go out, you know, Texas to Memphis and down south to Florida. Um, we came across this Pluckman Park deal, and we thought that it fit uh, our portfolio nicely. First of all, obviously, we like being uh, close to home when we possibly can. Uh, second of all, I thought it had components of market rate in the sense that it is, um, I shouldn't say market rate, but it, it had components of both our market rate portfolio as well as our affordable portfolio. Um, and. You know, Bedminster seems to be a, a thriving and, you know, really beautiful town. So it's a place that we thought would be a good investment. We have, just to address some of the questions that you asked, and those were good questions, we have, obviously, we, our interpretation of, you know, the deed restriction and, you know, the plans to the property, we have no intention of doing anything differently um, with regards to renting them out to folks that are 62 um, and older. To the best of my knowledge, there is a combination of um, of low and medium income. I don't believe that there's any very low, but I could be wrong. And I think it's 25 and 25. Um, there are two, there, or there's one retail storefront, uh, I don't know the directions, but on the right side of the property that's currently occupied by a barber, there's another retail storefront. Um, there's another retail, or there's another house, I should say, on the left of the property. And that's occupied by uh, the manager, um, his office, and it's vacant. Um, w we definitely would like to uh, understand what the town's needs are and what the town would like to see um, done to this you know, property. I think, f in my mind, from the outside, I think it fits very nicely you know, with the historic nature of the town. Um, I can't say that I've seen it during the summertime, so I don't know about the landscaping of the property. But um, you know, certainly the exterior seems to be well maintained. It, in my mind, the interior is is not upgraded at all, and we would you know definitely look to do interior upgrades as units turn. Um, you know, new carpeting, the the bathrooms. You know, they're handicap accessible. I, I don't remember. They might have had a tub surround. You know, we would definitely look to do upgrades in the bathroom and and definitely upgrades in the kitchen. Um, but for the most part, you know, I, I think it's a nice property. I definitely think it's a challenge 
that some of the or many of the units are you know second floor um, apartments, and so you know my parents are, are moving right now out of they live in New Rochelle and in New York, and they're moving right now into the city because they don't want to deal with steps anymore. So I, I think it's a challenge, but you know obviously we're willing to uh, abide by the restriction. I, I'm just hopeful that there will be you know enough of a demand for these second floor units. Um, if there's anything you know that you would like to see at the property, whether it be you know lighting um, or any improvements made, you know we'd be more than open to uh, making such improvements. Um, at the end of the day, th there there are two things that I'm coming here besides for just an approval um, and granting the sale. I'm looking for an extension of the uh, of the tax abatement of the pilot agreement that's currently in place. And the other thing is. What concerns me about the the way the um, abatement exists today is, is two things. Number one, it's a step up abatement, and so I think it started at three percent, a five percent, and then do, do you know? Are you familiar with the abatement? I I don't remember the okay. specifics of it off the top of my head. It was three percent for the first fifteen years, and then five percent of of your rental income for the second fifteen years. And that's currently to expire in 2025. Right. Okay. So it doesn't step up a third time, though, right? No. Okay. Um, it, it's it's definitely a concern because, obviously, beyond you know 2025, this is going to remain a um, an affordable deal, as I'm sure you'd, you'd want it to. I, I don't know if um, if you know based upon the deed exactly what you know the rules are. I don't really care because I, I intend on keeping it that way um, but but regardless it would be extremely helpful for the economics of the property especially if there are things that you're looking for such as you know better site lighting or, or other concerns that we would be more than willing to you know to do it, it would certainly help us if either you would step back the pilot to a three percent pilot or ex for the duration till 2025 or possibly give us a new um, pilot. One of the things that we've done in other cities is, you know, we've we, we've started, um, you know, a new pilot rather than taking over the old one. We're doing that in Newark right now. So um, I don't know if you'd consider that. I'm, but you know, that's certainly something that we'd be interested in because ten years goes by real quick. So. Well, I will say that uh, one thing in the. Uh, the current owners and the previous owners, uh, I think everybody up here on this dais will probably say the same thing, that uh, there has been a recurring uh, theme of complaints among the residents for uh, a lack of, uh, of response from the landlord, whether it be curbing, whether it be pavement, and with this winter it's probably exacerbated by the heaving of the... So you've got folks that have trouble getting around to begin with and when the curbing is very uneven and the stairs and in some cases the railing has been uh, uh, fallen apart and has not been replaced and the lighting and the parking lots so there has been a constant uh, you know there has been a uh, an ongoing history of a of I guess a lack of attentiveness on the <laughs> landlord and uh, one thing that is in the lease uh, or is in the agreement I should say um, that the town has probably not enforced to the level that it should, but I would think with a new landlord we would absolutely revisit, and that is there is a council, a council that consists of township committee and uh, residents uh, to work with a landlord on oversight. And uh, I think we've been a little bit remiss in letting that lapse over the years, and uh, I think that is something, it's, it's in the agreement, We've just simply not enforced it to the level that it needs to be. So I think you would expect, whether it's you or whoever is the new owner, that we would like to uh, probably reinstate that. And uh, another thing that I would uh, suggest is our uh, Bedminster Housing Corporation, uh, the folks that administer and look over our uh, affordable housing. I've had discussions with Sharon, and she has been unhappy with the current owner's response to the required reports and paperwork, uh, paperwork that needs to be submitted through the town. So uh, I think, again, whether it's you or whoever is the new uh, owner of this property, I don't think we're going to let it continue like that. So 
those are some things that I can think of just off the top of my head. I'll open it up to can, other can members. I, can I actually just ask two sure. questions? Or I have one comment and one question. Can you just explain the ramifications of such a council that you were just describing? Uh, if my recollection is, Mayor, if I may, is it's a it's it's an advisory council to mm -hmm. oversee and act as a uh, a body to uh, intermediate between the residents and the landlord to try to address uh, various issues that come up. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning why that was put together is to give a little more weight, so it wouldn't be, um, you know, uh, a single resident having to complain to their landlord that might not have the authority or power to really get anything done, but to give the yeah, it's one thing to have just one person that's always complaining, but it's mm -hmm. another thing if there's a group and it seems to be more of a of a group issue. And I believe that's also an aid to the to the owner, because again, you've probably had tenants, you know, a onesie twosie that complains about everything. Maybe that's not a true problem, but it's certainly if you have an advisory group, yeah, yeah, we've determined that is a problem. I know a couple of years ago they had an issue when we had another bad winter with snow that uh, uh, a previous landlord had piled a bunch of snow and had put it all in the handicapped parking. It was a good place to pile it from his perspective, but not so for the, the people that, that used that. So. It's things like that. Yeah. So we've worked with tenants associations and you know the like, so I don't think that would be a problem you know, for us. And with regards to the reporting, on many of our deals, we're reporting to HUD on a monthly basis. And about half of our investments are with institutional partners. So you know, we're, very, we're used to the reporting, and that wouldn't be an issue for us as well. Uh, Mayor, actually, I, I just wanted to quickly bring up the sure. provision of the agreements just to advise. The, um, the management committee um, is under the agreement is in order to ensure the payment of underlying mortgages, the maintenance of ad ap excuse me, adequate capital reserves, and the maintenance of all improvements and services related to or associated with the proper functioning of the senior citizen project as defined in there. So it's, it, it was, it's a liaison, so to speak, for the residents mm -hmm. to, with the man, uh, landlord. Okay, thank you. And I mean, w one thing that we have as a great challenge in Bedminster is we, uh, we have the hills and a lot of affordable housing, a lot of uh, rental units and the like. And, uh, you know, you've seen Bedminster, you see how nice it is in town, you see how nice Pluckman is, you see how nice the hills are. And that is a constant struggle for the town and our zoning folks, our code enforcement folks. You know, we don't want to see anything kind of go to pot or, you know, uh, uh, lose, you know, a... Uh, a poorly maintained neighborhood affects all property values uh, all through town. So I think that is something that we, we hold in great concern. Absolutely. I, I think, Mayor, we uh, all of us have uh, direct experience with what you're just talking about. Every time we have an election and we, we knock on those doors, uh, we, we hear a lot of complaints from various people. And, and uh, they don't have an advocate uh, on the fact that it is private property. It's essentially a land landlord-tenant issue. But an advisory board or somebody that can collate these complaints and bring them to the attention of the landlord with some impetus by the governing body, I think, would serve the, the tenants well, especially um, if you have a landlord who's not receptive or not responsive. I, I did want to say I was looking over your, um, uh, some of your uh, – on your website, and I see that you, you got, as you outline your strategy um, – it seems like you've, you've, your history has been in, 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 uh, in buying what's, what you call usually underperforming assets, um, distressed-type properties. And interesting, you said you'd like to get into properties where the previous management has been half-hearted or absentee um, and kind of turning them around. Um, as any investor, and I'm sure you have other investors that, that invest with you, um, you know, there's an upside. You're, you know, you obviously are, are in it to make a profit. The one thing that I, I wanted to just um, talk to you about was in, in turning these properties around, you often look for properties that have significant upside in rents, uh, the ability of tree chop to trim expenses, thereby increasing net income over time, as well as the ultimate value of the asset. The fact that these are, are regulated that, and, and your ability to raise rents is going to be somewhat restricted, um, but yet you talked about putting some money into the project and upgrading them, thereby increasing expenses. If you can't increase the rents appropriately with the amount of money you're going to put into it, 
how does your business model work for for profit for, you know for making a profit and having the proper margins for your investors mm -hmm. that's a good question I'm, I'm a big believer of being honest up front and you know no surprises down the road so i'm just going to lay all my cards out and at the end of the day if i'm not the right guy then i'd prefer you know a, a quick yes or no rather than a long maybe or at least a strange relationship down the road um with regards to the rents so obviously yes we are capped the rents however are not at the maximum uh rent levels based on the uh the guidelines uh I, I don't know the i don't know offhand what it is but there's about depending on it whether it's a a um a low income or median income there's anywhere between a 50 and 150 dollar um bump that you can achieve through you know just this is you're at 850 now we're able to charge a thousand dollars and um, my understanding is that there's no rent control in Bedminster, and so we would definitely look, you know, to increase the rents. It might not be to the legal limit. It might not be in one year. It might be staged over two years. We obviously don't want to drive tenants out for ourselves as well as for them. But that's definitely, you know, a strategy in terms of boosting the uh, boosting the revenue. On the expense side, I think that there are. It, it's funny. I mean, I think. I understand how it can be interpreted, but I can tell you that some of the things that we do are economies of scale. And so, for example, in New Jersey, we have six contractors who, you know, we basically, while they're not on our payroll, for all intents and purposes, you know, they're our guys. We just bought a 502 unit building in Philadelphia. We sent down five contractors to live down there for the next six months to renovate units. So I think that, you know, due to the, due to the volume, we can definitely achieve um, savings on you know certain trades. The folks that own it now are from Hudson County. They don't own any affordable deals. Um, I don't think that they you know really understand and know the game. They have <coughs> somebody who who's there. He's a, he seems to be a nice guy, but I think that you know based on the amount that they are paying him and based on the level of um, of work that the apartments need whether it's the owner that's not you know doing a or giving him the resources and the tools to do it or whether he is you know that's something obviously that we would have to determine but but there's certainly a disconnect there in addition there are other things uh, it seems that bedminster water is uh, is quite pricey there I, I don't know i don't believe that most of the apartments have you know low flow aerators we've been putting in um something a actually at the at the entrance right by the meter which is it's a device and you know that's been lowering our water rates by 15 percent so i think there are cost saving um you know items or, or let's say putting the uh the gas on a on a on an esco as opposed to uh going with pse and g so i think there are various cost savings that we can achieve through that as opposed to uh, reducing the services and um you know the level of improvements at the property if anything I would look to you know reduce the expenses while improving the services. Well, we appreciate your candor, and sure. um, and and I'm a landlord myself, and I and I know that uh, the cheapest rent in the world is not what people want is as much as they want a nice place to live and services and amenities, um, and they get and that they perceive they're getting value for their rent dollars, um, and no increase is welcome, but. Um, based on of course what we've heard over the years um a responsive landlord would that is putting some capital into the property and upgrading it would probably be well received right overall carolyn do you have any is it rented at 100 percent now there are four vacant units at the moment so okay. i guess it would be like 92 percent. okay yeah well, thank you again for your candor appreciate sure. that uh, so, uh, just a few quick questions. Uh, what is the typical unit count for your other uh, properties? This is definitely on the smaller end. I would say that it, we we try to stay above 100 units, but being that this is um, you know a local property or we consider to be local, uh, you know we are willing to to go down a bit. All right. So the, your other properties over 100 units, and what's the total unit count here? It's there, there are 50 apartments, and those. The retail or whatever. Right. Fifty units. And I guess 
the uh, it, it's introduced that you are currently in contract negotiations and so no, no contract has been negotiated yet no we're in contract right now you're under contract yes we're under contract and um, you're in due diligence or um, I believe that's a good question I, I'm not a hundred percent sure whether we're out of due diligence or in due diligence it is contingent upon us um, obviously getting approval to purchase the property as well as um, with the pilot. With the pilot. So yes. the pilot is a contingency of yes. the acquisition. Yes. Um, you mentioned in other scenarios where you've extended pilots or you've redrafted pilot agreements um, and you mentioned something going on in Newark. Have you ever, uh, what other towns have you affected that completely, taken it through to a new pilot? I've only done it in Newark. I don't. And is that complete in Newark, or are you still in discussion? No, that's complete, yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, and Joe, uh, so here, the pilot, it, it's all under long-term tax exemption law? Yeah, it's, it's regulated by statute, so it's something that we'd have to look at and see if we, it's something we can do. It's not something we'd be able to I, I, agree you know, to I, this evening. Um, it's something that we'd have to take a look at, see if there is a basis for what, well, first off, whether if for an extension purposes, whether there is any leeway to extend it. And if there isn't, whether there's any basis where we could be able to enter into a new one that would justify it under the statute, because it is very regulated. Right, right. To, to extend it, you'd actually have to, you know, give us a pro forma. You'd have to show us something that is, it's needs-based. Right. So, so you'd have to establish some. Right baseline for why a pilot is required so, to move forward and it usually requires uh, an assessment of your total project cost or looking at AGR. Yep. Um, right, so in Newark it was it, it was somewhat of a different deal in the sense that there were you know vast amount of improvements that we needed to make at the property um, and so you know I'm not sure that it's really apples to apples. Right, and, and essentially you have a but for analysis that you have to pass through to get there. Mm -hmm. And you know I just caution you if that's a basis of your moving forward, uh, you better start talking to. Uh, Got it. To Mr. Sordillo. Okay. Soon. Joe, just to follow up on that, um, is is there a requirement if they w wish for the pilot to be extended that it has to be done? now at the property sale or could it be done could it be entertained later down the line when it comes time to expire it, yeah it could be done it could be done later it doesn't i mean aside from their contract under the no, law i, under it can I, be I understand they probably yeah, they want it want, because they want, they want that long-term protection yeah. but on our end we may want to see some performance right yeah, and it this, may it, be oh, we'd like to see five years of good stewardship and Maybe it it depends would... on on how they would qualify, yeah. you know, as, as Mr. Jacobs was saying. But if, if it's something that we could, they do qualify for for a reissuance of the pilot, mm -hmm. then it's something that not necessarily has to be today, unless right. something comes out, you know, on with regard to our end, whether they may only qualify today, they may only be the housing need today, and maybe in yeah. ten years from now they don't have that same housing need to be able to qualify. That yeah. you know, it's it's really kind of a what if game. Right. And oh. Carolyn had asked, uh, Ms. Freeman had actually had asked a question about uh, vacancy rates. Um, I'm trying to recall, these are mostly um, one and two beds? Yeah, they're one and two bedrooms. Do you know what the uh, mix is? I'm thinking that it's 37 and 13, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, 37, one bed, and 13. Right. Do, do you know if the two beds are, um, are they being used as two bedroom? Units or I wouldn't know that. I'm okay. sorry. Right. Um, no other questions. Okay. Have you personally been able to review the lighting of the property outside? I've never been there at night. You've never been there. Um, have you had any discussions with anybody on your team about the lighting? At all? Nobody has uh, made me aware that there are any issues, but it seems that there are. So we've uh, we've had concerns about the lighting. So I was just curious, uh, how soon after your acquisition would you address that? Um, I don't remember whether there are um, are street lights in there from PSENG or whether we own the street lights. If there are street lights in there from PSENG, then we can just tap off of theirs, and they have like an unmetered um, like an unmetered you know fee that you can pay to have um, like high wattage uh, lights put on those uh, light posts. If they're if it's us, you know, and we own the lights and not PSENG, then, you know, we're going to have to bid it out. But uh, I would expect it to take two months, 
So I, I don't think it's, you know, a long-term project. Okay, thank you. Sure. Go ahead, Mayor. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't have any other questions. Uh, I don't believe we have a decision to make tonight. Um, I know uh, they were looking for, uh, you know, conclusion of their contract, and part of that is getting, you know, approval from the Township Committee, but there are some questions, I guess, to Mr. Sordillo regarding the pilot program, so. I think we'd like to hear what our options are with that. Um, and I think you've also now heard what some of our concerns are. And to Ms. Santucci's point, as you're driving home tonight, if you go through Pluckman, make a left turn i'll drive by the property go see. Uh, okay. you know the lighting is something you know lighting you know walkways curbing that sort of thing handrails a lot of exterior is a lot of stuff that we tend to hear um yeah, Mayor, if, if I, if I go ahead um, what we could do start is start our our discussions with the the potential purchaser with regard mm -hmm. to the pilot get start collecting the information to see if it's something mm -hmm. we even can do mm -hmm. and if it's something we can do then we'll we'll Provide a, an analysis for the cap for the committee as to what's the benefits to the township or none, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know timing wise as as the mayor requested. Uh, but in the meantime, we can also work with the uh, potential purchaser on doing uh, consenting to the transfer because it really, while they're both contingents on their contract for the township's viewpoint, it's really two different things. One is the pilot, and one is the consent to the uh, transfer. So what we did uh, on the prior, as I mentioned earlier is we adopted a resolution um, and had the p purchaser sign it so that it would eventually be recorded of title to show in the, in the, de in the, in the, uh, in the title of record for the property that the purchaser acknowledged that they will be continuing the, the deed restrictions uh, that are already in place. Um, so we could really work on those at the same time uh, so that if it is something that does move forward and the, co uh, the committee decides that it's something it wants to, to a vote, we could have that ready uh, for, for the committee. Okay. Can, can I, I, uh, I mean, sorry, I don't. Oh, go I do Girl. understand, um, f as I recall from the last elect campaign, election campaign, that our candidate did discover that the lighting problem wasn't just they haven't put light bulbs in, it was more of a wiring problem, which makes me think. I do recall that it was owned, that the Pluggerman Village owned, Pluggerman Park owned the light, the lighting, because it was. A big project right. to fix it because mm -hmm. if it was just a light bulb, they would have done it. That's that's what I recall. And um, let's see if there was something else. No, that's all. Thank okay. you. I, I just wanted to add one thing, Mayor. Um, when you when you spoke about the uh, the fact that the rents currently aren't aren't at the the max that they could be under the affordable guidelines, which ostensibly are to keep them affordable, right. and that these are senior citizens, many of them on fixed incomes, etc. And I'm sure you have to go back to your investors and put out to them, you know, what the rate of return is, what kind of yield they're looking at, kind of long-term appreciation, and, and, and put together some type of investment portfolio or prospectus. And you may not be able to do this, but, um, it, you know, I guess my only concern is is, is a, a spike in these um, all at once as opposed to a graduated uh, increase in rents, if that was the intent. Uh, to reach that threshold, maybe uh, with some type of barometer based on CPI or something, some other um, index. And I don't know if you'd be able to provide some um, uh, something to this committee as to what your intentions are and how you're going to reach that. I mean, after all, you are entitled to make money on this. I mean, you know, uh, but um, a concern is, you know, uh, all at once, you know, and very sudden to the residents there. I think one of the, the challenges as a landlord is, in order to, to take, you have to give. And so I can tell you that, uh, you know, whatever the project is, we, we don't look to take before we give. I think it was you that said that, you know, you have to, when a resident sees that somebody, that the landlord is putting money into the property, they're much more likely to, you know, accept the increase. And, um, and I think it goes a long way when, when the landlord actually cares about the property as opposed to uh, the tenant's, you know, view of it as just a, uh, a moneymaker and that's it, so. One other question uh, specifically, what, what do you think your plan is for uh, on-site management, uh, a super mm -hmm. as it will? Is it, do you plan to have somebody there daily? Is it just, what is your? Yeah. In my mind, the, the house to the left of the property, it's a two floor house um, and it's, 
it's fitted out, you know, with a bathroom and a kitchen upstairs. Um, I don't know if we talk about that now, but we would definitely look to um, to divide that house to retail on the first floor, maybe an office or something, and then we would look to have a live-in super um, up there on the second floor. I think uh, our, our next meeting is what, April the 7th? Yes. So I know we, we probably owe you an answer by then so you can move ahead. Um, I, I also don't begrudge a businessman making a profit, and he should. We want healthy businesses in town, and we want nice facilities in town. We want to have something that will complement the rest of Bedminster and the quality of life that we enjoy here. So uh, my, yeah. my, I do well, have well, one. You know, from, a, from a timing perspective, Joe, how many uh, meetings do we need? It, it, a, we, you need to explore whether or not uh, this pilot can be extended. Mm -hmm. And then if it can be extended, what application requirements um, Treetop would need to provide for then for the assessment of whether an extension or new pilot is appropriate. Right. And then how many meetings do we need to affect uh, the pilot? Is that one meeting? Well, it would, it, it would be a resolution, so we could do so in one meeting. Um, but it would be, with, with regard to the, the consenting to the transfer, that would be no issue. We should have that ready by the, the April 7th. So with regard to an extension of the pilot, we can work with the, with the purchaser and do our best to do so. But you know, depending on what type of information comes back, I mean, I, I'm concerned whether it is something we're even able to do um, okay. uh, under the statute without a uh, without a you know additional development being being included. Um, it's it's not as easy just to to grant a, a, a pilot to an existing residential uh, development. It's usually something that is being developed and it's a new new development that, that gets the pilots uh, triggered. But we're more than well to look with it, look with the applicant to see if there is a way to trigger it and then it will be left to the committee's decision whether they want to do that, or, you know, whether you as right. a body want to do that or not, whether it's in the best interest of the, of the township or not. But, um, but that, I mean, we can definitely get the analysis done. Um, whether there's additional applications that are required from the state or approvals from the state, depending on what avenue we have to go down, it may require more than one meeting, but we won't know until we start going down that road. Right. And, and Joe, what's the, uh, is, is there a sun setting on the Section 8 uh, housing? The, the, for the deep, the Section 8, the, the affordable housing? Yes. Yes. Um, what does sun setting mean? Meaning, meaning when the, re, the, the uh, deed restrictions expire on the affordable housing, right? right. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, let's see if I can get an answer for you right away, unless Judy knows it off the top of her head, I can see if I can find it. Um, I don't have that date right, right readily available, but there is a date, and I can get that information okay. to, to the committee. And Mr. Uh, Mermelstein, once again, your um, your business model is to keep the affordable housing in place um, and not to let it lapse and convert to market rate. So just to be clear, that was or that is assuming that we can work out an extension of the pilot. So if, for example, and I'm just throwing out a number, if my taxes are going to go from $27,000 where they exist today at the you know end of this period to $50,000, that's obviously a concern. And you know we would definitely look to make up the money and probably not to keep it um, affordable. I, I could add that um, with our other low and moderate income that we have in town, we've, we've taken great measure to try to extend the affordability controls um, as units turn over um, to maintain them in the inventory. Uh, the task of a, of a town having to go out and build more affordable housing um, is, uh, is just economically you know, not feasible. So um, anything that you would consider in extending those controls formally yeah, I'd be would, happy be, to. would be well received by the, uh, by the committee. Uh, I'd be happy to do it. I mean, it, again, I don't, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, this is a business for us. Yeah. And um, thank you. And um, you know, taking such a large hit to our bottom line at the extension um, of such a pilot, assuming that they're coterminous, would would be difficult for us to stomach. But if there was um, some way to to do everything simultaneously, 
um, if you'd accept something like that, I'm, I'm open. I mean, if mm -hmm. I'm open to anything, if I want this to be a mutually, you know, beneficial relationship. And so if there's something that, and I think I've laid out, you know, kind of my concerns and if there's something that you need, uh, I'm, I'm open ears and I'm fine with that. Can I, can I just uh, understand one thing with regards to the, I just don't want anybody to work if, and do unnecessary work, but if, if we don't get at least the assignment of the pilot, I'm going to drop this deal. So it, there's no reason for you to work on the consent of sale without the pilot. Well, so, um, the, the assignment of the pilot, I think we've done uh, previously, was part of the consent to okay. transfer. That was, okay. we had continued that on um, under the uh, prior agreements. So those were part of that okay. consent. Uh, it's whether we extend it or mm -hmm. grant a new one. That's, I think, where the, the trouble is. Not the, I, I understand. Not, not okay. the continuation. Joe, can we get a copy, I don't know if you all want it, of that agreement? Because I never knew there was a council of township committee and residents, so I, I would like to read that, the whole agreement. I, can, I have that in a PDF. I can, I can email it to everybody. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think probably our next step is we do have an April 7th meeting, and not that I want to drag you out any longer, but I also think that we've all had a chance to hear you. I know there's members of this dais that want to look into some other things, so don't want to make a rash comment right now, but uh, if you can give us till uh, at least our next meeting, I think we can at least give you a, a feeling for what we want. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me out here. It was a pleasure meeting everybody, and hope to hear from you soon. Thank you Thank for your you. time, Thank you. sir. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Okay, usually we do this at the very beginning of the meeting, but uh, this is a time twice every meeting that we open up our microphone up front to public comments. Any member of the public is welcome to come up to the microphone, state your name, where you live, and uh, give us any comments that you wish to make, anything that's not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none. Wait, 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 oh, oh, wait, wait. oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you know what? This is a good time for that. Mm -hmm. There was something that we did not get on the agenda tonight, and I think it's important that. That's a green tie you have there. <laughs> Just making a, a note. I got it from my, uh, from my youngest, so I told him I'd wear it. Um, Mayor Parker, members of the committee, my name is Douglas Stevenson, 23 Ski Hill Drive in Bedminster, but I'm not here um, as uh, necessarily a resident. I'm here uh, representing the Little League. I have with me uh, members of the Somerset Hills Little League, including Mike Valdudo, who's the current president. And um, what I wanted to raise uh, with the committee, if I would, uh, is a bit of a snafu that's come up. As you recall, I was here earlier this year requesting uh, permission to proceed with a donation uh, of a scoreboard to the Pluckman Park, and um, I will say that as I was reviewing the agenda, I was relieved to hear Mr. Mermelstein's presentation. I thought he was acquiring the park <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> what he's looking to acquire. So the, uh, the points I'm going to make, I guess, have been cut a bit. Um, but it, all kidding aside, um, one of the issues that's come up is as we were trying to put together requests for field use, we were asked by recreation uh, or we were told by recreation that it would be likely we would be uh, required to make a $2,000 payment for the privilege of using the fields. And that is problematic for a host of reasons. Um, the primary reason is that we do not pay uh, to use fields in Bernardsville, in Peapack Gladstone, nor does anyone in District 17, which is where our children play. No program in District 17 pays to use the fields. Um, we have in the past made donations to use the, uh, you know, for the, the, in an effort to work with the town, we've provided uh, uh, different facilities to the fields, um, and we certainly want to work in conjunction and have a mutually beneficial relationship, but to have every year starting off a $2,000 fee, uh, which of course could have expand if the other towns learn that we're paying to use these fields. So we're looking at maybe a, an $8,000 or $6,000 fee just to start the year, and that's just not something that we can shoulder. 
uh, year after year. <clears throat> With the notion that we were going to put the scoreboard in, the other thing that I had mentioned at the meeting, and it's not formally memorialized in anything, is that we also intend to get access to the Pluckerman Park field to do significant field upgrades. I had mentioned putting in a mound. We have to bring in dirt to bring in the infield up the grade. We want to cut the outfield for warning track purposes, make modifications to the fences, and <clears throat> perhaps uh, upgrade the dugouts. We're talking about a significant amount of money. And I don't stand here to give threats. I just am here to report that I will tell you that the decision made at the Somerset Hills board level, of which I'm a member, is that if the township insists on requiring us to pay a fee, we will pull out. We will play baseball elsewhere because we cannot open Pandora's box on that issue. We can't do it economically and fiscally. And I will also tell you that as the outgoing president of the Bedminster Far Hills Little League, I've been out there to <clears throat> the folks that made up that league and promised them and told them that this was going to be a seamless transition. You will play your games like you've always played them. You will have games here in Bedminster. You will have games in Far Hills. You will have games in Peatback Gladstone. You will have games in, in Bernardsville. We will play Tewksbury like we've always done. With this recent development and the decision to pull out of Bedminster, all of our constituents, all of the folks in town who play baseball will travel for practice. They will travel for games every day. And I will tell you that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem for me. It will be a problem for you because I think the chairs will start filling up here at these meetings. <clears throat> I have a, a proposal that I, I'd ask for you to consider. And it's something similar to what Somerset Hills does with the Kiwanis Complex. I fully understand the committee's need to try to offset fees um, for the users of the parks. What we would like you to consider is working an arrangement where we get a long-term lease arrangement for Pluckman Park um, for a nominal rent, which is to say a dollar. But the, the, the quid pro quo would be we would maintain those fields. So you will have no costs. We will not ask Mr. Manns and his crew to come out to cut the grass, to line the fields to upgrade, uh, upgrade the infields. We will take that on. We think it would work for Pluckman because it's already got the existing fencing, so it's not a pure, it's not like River Road or Miller Lane where you've got multiple uses there. We understand the need on those fields to get soccer and lacrosse going, and, and certainly we're not looking to, to, to go there. But if we could have the Pluckman Park field, and it's not really on an exclusive basis. We certainly understand that there are other users there. We know that adult uh, organizations like to come in because of the pavilion there, and we would certainly be amenable to a non-exclusive basis, but during the season, perhaps in some fall ball, um, and we can work the dates out to give us the opportunity to, to, to really take over control of that field because we're really at a crossroads. As I've told you in the past, the Bedminster Far Hills Little League and wrapping up and winding up the affairs has some money left over, and we want to put it to the fields for the use of the people here in town. The concern that I have as sort of the shepherd of that money and, and, and the, the spearheading this effort is how can I really go back to the outgoing board members of Bedminster Far Hills and the parents and the families that put the money into the till, put the money into the Pluckman Park, and even if we were able to get a, a waiver of this year for the fees, what happens next year when the fee comes in and we don't have the movement, we've already put the money in, we're committed and then we're told, well, we need a $2,000 fee next year, the year beyond, and the decision collectively is we need to pull out. That's not something that we can absorb. So I'm at that crossroad where do I put the money in? I, I, I had the scoreboard. I went through mer various meetings here. I've, I appeared before this very board. It was a green light. We, we ordered it. We actually put a check in the mail, and we stopped payment on it because I, I'm, just, I, I'm not really at a point where we can commit significant dollars, the worst thing I think we can all agree on that we would put the scoreboard and do all these field improvements and have it sit there for no one to use. And that's where I'm at. And, and my request, I guess, would be to please consider some sort of non-exclusive use arrangement where we can get on that field, we'll maintain it. Um, obviously, to do that, we need a shed. We've got to have the equipment there. And I think there's plenty of, of lot coverage that we can get a shed down there um, for that purpose. And, and certainly, um, <clears throat> I know Robin Ray was um, the messenger on this fee issue, and you know I'll take 
uh, the responsibility on that. I, I am spearheading the issue with all of the snow that we've had. I have not had a chance to get a contractor out there to tell me what he can do and how much it's going to cost. I haven't been able to get that mound installed. It looks like this year that we'll probably have to stick with a softball field there. I don't know whether we're going to get it all done. But looking forward uh, for future years, and that's really the spot we want to invest our money. But I want to do it in a way that I know I'm going to get a return on that, meaning we're going to be able to play games here and, and uh, provide an experience for the folks that live here that they don't always have to travel out of town. That's going to be a big drag. Um, so... I don't know how we go about taking that to the next step, but if you would please consider that, that would be very helpful for, helpful for us. Well, just in reference to the fee, uh, I have to say that when you called me up the other day, that was actually the first I'd heard of it. That's an initiative of the rec committee, but fees are controlled by the five of us who are elected up here. So, Mayor, if I could just interrupt, yeah. because we have a recreation meeting tomorrow night, and mm -hmm. that is actually the subject matter so as you were probably about to say, nothing's been brought before this township right. committee yet. So right. I was going to mention there's a recreation committee meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. where that's going to be discussed. Um, then I was to bring back here uh, what was discussed. So, so was that presented to you as a fait accompli that was the charge? Yes. Yes. So that, that is not that's, really um, accurate. That's, yeah, that's somebody speaking that doesn't have the authority to. Okay. Uh, that would be then for 2014, I understand process, but my overarching concern here is if it was determined that, you know what, we're going to table the fee issue for this year, mm -hmm. again, without any, anything to grab onto to say long term, it's okay, we're going to be protected in the sense that we're not going to have to endure that fee. Um, I think the lease arrangement really needs to get put in place or a license agreement or what have you that the quid pro quo, again, we would, we would take that cost off your books, so to speak. We would uh, absorb the cost of doing that. And then we know we, we would at least have a place to put the money and to know that we could, you know, do business, if you will, out of that one park. And, you know, to the extent the, the mixed use parks how play by a different set of rules, that's fine. But you understand my concern. Judy, that park, unlike Burnt Mills Park, and I'm asking a question I don't know the answer to, which you should never do, but um, is that a, uh, is that, that's not Green Acres funded, because it's from the old school. It is? It is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mayor, I, I'm not sure if it was funded, but I'm pretty sure that is on the Rossi, which may it is on the Rossi to the Green Acres regulations, even if it wasn't purchased by Green Acres funds. But, e but even with Green Acres, we still have the ability to, um, regulate its use it just has we have to make sure that it is open to anyone who wants to use it but not necessarily at times that are that they want to use it on correct okay. actually mayor we, me and john actually have drafted similar type agreements that uh the gentleman has has brought up in other municipalities where on green acres property where the the what it was whether it was the football team or the the or the baseball team wanted to do major improvements to the field right. but they didn't want to do that without having right. some type some of, kind uh, of arrangement mm -hmm. arrangement and we've constructed green acres approved agreements where okay. where it allowed for basically and it's just you simplified terms a priority use for the for the uh, the baseball or for the since it's the baseball uh, mm -hmm. uh, team. Uh, for scheduling purpose and during their seasons. However, there was had to be some provision where it allowed the public use at certain times when it wasn't being scheduled and, and so forth. But the, the arrangement was very similar to as outlined tonight as, you know, not so much uh, heavy on rent, but it was through services, maintenance, upkeep, initial improvements that covered, you know, the rental for the consideration in the agreement. So they can be done. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've had very good success in them in the past and gotten Green Acres to approve them. Uh, so even though the Green Acres do apply, but it's just something that's whether or not it's the best interest of the township. And, and the Green Acres program, you know, is, establishes you have a, you can have a residential, you have a resident rate, and you can have a non-resident rate. And uh, they may even provide for corporate rates as well. And I forget about that issue. Uh, but we had determined uh, last year, I believe it was, uh, we confirmed to Doug that Somerset Hills would always, would always be treated as a resident organization. Yes, we committed to you last year that in the formation of your merger, 
that you would be Bedminster's home team with Little League and you'd be treated as such? In my understanding, and I'm getting this, um, it's, it's hearsay, uh, but my understanding of the nature of the fee is that it ties back to the cost of paint um, and that the soccer would be charged two pallets of paint for $2,000. We were getting charged for two pallets of paint for $2,000 and lacrosse was getting charged for one pallet of paint for $1,000. And if that is indeed the rationale that they're employing to uh, derive to these numbers, my proposal would sort of take that out of the equation. We would be providing our own paint to the tune of whatever we can get paint for. Mm -hmm. um, I do have with me, and if you're inclined to, to, to hear him, Stephen Schwed, who is intimately involved with the, how the Somerset Hills runs Kiwanis Park in conjunction with their municipality, if you'd like to hear from him. Yeah, if you want to give us a few minutes, I'd, it'd be... Thank you. I apologize for Education. being casual. I had a, a bit of a domestic emergency with a new appliance that was delivered, so uh, <laughs> I had to run right over. Uh, my name is Steve Schwade, and I've been part of Somerset Hills Little League, I guess, going on 12 years now. Um, <clears throat> I've been a board member for about eight. Uh, worked very closely with Cheryl Ferranti and the uh, Borough Council in Bernardsville with regard to um, maximizing the use of our complex that we call the Kiwanis Field, which is technically uh, the Kiwanis Rotary Fields at Southside Park, but I don't think anyone knows it by that name. If you've ever visited us um, over a period of time, is there anybody here who's not familiar with the complex? Who or You're right now, You're right off of 202. No, no. that's the uh, Rose Bowl, as we call it. Uh -huh. um, this is one located off of Bernard's Avenue at the end. It's at, if you were to look oh. at the quarry, oh. the oh. old yep. quarry, it's at yep. the top of that, but you would access it through Manorty okay. Road. Um, when a number of board members, including myself, got involved with, uh, when we merged what was Somerset Hills Youth Baseball with Bernardsville Little League, uh, we took on a number of capital projects. Uh, a number of them were sweat equity. A number of us would go in and spread dirt to fix holes in the fields and so forth. Uh, that grew tremendously, and I can tell you that I've personally overseen over $70,000 in investment in the complex, including walkways, um, replacement of all of the fences, installation of sheds to store our equipment so we didn't have rakes being thrown around by kids who were up there after hours and so forth. Um, we've done a tremendous job of, of, of making the place our home, and we certainly want to do the same with the complex here in uh, Pluckerman Park. Uh, again, I was also concerned, as Doug said, mm -hmm. uh, when I saw the agenda this evening, I was a bit concerned, but thankfully, not the same. Um, some of the ideas that I've had was as I've walked through the, the complex over there, and obviously some, some field improvements on the infield, but um, the need to put consumables such as drying agents that we use periodically, uh, lime, uh, paint, things like that, um, th there needs to be some sort of storage facility for that, something that can be secured, something that's aesthetically appealing, and something that fits the community. Um, that's in addition to things like a scoreboard that we'd like to put in. Um, but I, I'd like the opportunity to, to sit with whoever's responsible or some one member of the, the committee here to, to find out what kind of a relationship we could really cultivate. Um, we'd like to have a similar experience for the, the folks in Bedminster that our kids have. It's a very family-oriented complex. You've got a great park over there right next to it, so families who bring younger kids there, their older kids are playing, you know, there might be opportunities for us to, to you know, contribute to that as well. But uh, I think that, you know, and I encourage you to come to the, the Kiwanis Park, um, even though it's been put to bed for the winter and we're waiting for the thaw, um, it's still one of the most pleasant parks that you'll see. We hold district tournaments there. We don't have lights. We are just basically sunlight operations. Mm -hmm. We do operate on Sundays, but we do have batting cages, you know, enough to you know, field four teams at a time, even though there's only two fields. We have a uh, regulation 200-foot field, and then we also have a regulation 175-foot field. So I, I encourage you to come up and see and, and contact me, but you know, we have a long tradition of contributing and giving back. Um, and when we see fees that come in, things like that concern us because it makes it hard for us to take on capital projects, especially if we see fees getting stacked on from other towns and they, they jump on the bandwagon as well. But um, again, I'd like to you know, explore what opportunities we have for putting in a shed, looking at the scoreboard that Doug started working on and you know, brought it so close to fruition at this point. I'd love to see it get put up down there. Well, I will tell you one thing from this side of the dais. Mm -hmm. Last year when the news kind of became public that there was a merger, 
Um, I don't think it's any secret that uh, most of us up on this dais are encouraging of more regionalization and shared services amongst the towns in the Somerset Hills. And it, your merger made sense. And the idea that we can combine and with combined towns and groups that we can get more synergy and more resources into uh, our kids just makes complete sense. Um, sometimes it may seem as we go through our budget cycles and as we scramble to figure out how to make the numbers add up on our budget that there's always, it almost seems like it's always a race to the bottom. How can we do as little as possible, spend as little as possible? And yes, that's a goal as we try to keep our taxes as low as possible. But there's another competing, and we hear it all the time uh, from the parents and the folks out there, is that they also want to see quality service. They want to see quality fields. They want their kids playing on the best facilities possible. There is a way to do both, and you're outlining just that. So I, I'm, I'm encouraged by the idea that perhaps, if it's possible, we can find a way to partner with the Little League. And it's one thing to get $2,000 to take care of paint or lime, but it's another thing that if you can have some stewardship over that field and perhaps make it better than it would be just simply by taxpayer support. So I agree. And you know, when you get volunteers who are members of, you know, of the, the league, we have league uh, families that will come in and donate time, painting contractors or roofing contractors, um, and they will certainly add to the value of the complex depending on what projects you take on. Um, one question I have, though, is also you mentioned, you know, earlier having you know business in town and businesses flourishing. One of the things that we do very well, and I was intimately involved with, is we've established a sponsorship program. Almost 20% of our budget comes from working with sponsors, local businesses, who contribute to us. Mm -hmm. um, in exchange, what we do there at Kiwanis is we have field sites. Just like you do at a professional ballpark. And just like the, the Bedminster Far Hills had. So um, do you have an ordinance on the books as to the ability to maintain uh, signage on those fields? I think we've handled that through con uh, concessions, approvals, specific approvals for different fields through concessions in the past. That's how we've handled those. Because um, under the law, under the local public contracts law, you can handle, uh, you can allow field signs or, or, or uh, fence signs on public mm -hmm. fields through concessions. Are they, that way it was done on a case-by-case -case basis. Are they permitted to be installed for a season, or must they be taken down regularly and reinstalled? Uh, what we have in, at, in Bernardsville, and again, trying to mm -hmm. establish some consistency here, is part of the reason we have uh, sponsorship signs that stay up. We host uh, a district tournament mm -hmm. that runs from June until July on weekends and a couple of nights a week. But we also have 600 families, or well, 400 families, excuse me, passing through and we've got every every business in town that you can think of sponsors and they participate in the league they from shine uh, signage to shirts to having you know some of the businesses even host parties for the kids you know pizzerias ice cream places like that and we want to continue that with the Bedminster businesses as well and I want to make sure that we're able to continue with a consistent program so I'd like to know if we can uh, we did, we did have signs but your, your signs usually came down at the end of the season, but it was on multi-use. It's it's in a it was at a multi-use facility. You didn't really have really an outfield fence, no, so to speak. Right. It was along the fence across the path of Miller. Right. And we put it up on opening day, and after closing day, we came back and we took them down. So. And also just. April through June. And also just to be fair, for the record, to our friends that contribute on the rec committee. You know, they were looking at ways. They've gotten their or marching orders from the five of us to try to look at ways to try to keep the cost supporting the programs that are out there. So I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to throw them under the bus either. I think they were just doing what they thought that we probably wanted. So. I think this is great though that you've come forward and told us because, as I said, the meeting's tomorrow, and there has been discussion back and forth. But really, it's just a tiny bit premature, but I'm glad you're here because then I can go, I'm the liaison, I can go and discuss with them
kind of what you presented here. Well, remember, in the scheme of baseball, <laughs> we're two weeks away from getting things ready. Correct. So, so we Correct. may be premature, yep. but we've got sponsors that are already working with us and Absolutely. things of that nature. So, so we need to act pr fairly quickly. I'm really glad. I'm really glad to hear. And I would like to work uh, with you if uh, you would permit me to do that. Well, you and Mr. Jacobs are the sub. Mm -hmm. We liaisons for uh, and, sure. um, right. and, and I encourage you to uh, contact Cheryl Ferranti. She and I spoke today. Uh, she had suggested that you reach out to her if you have any questions. Okay. From her perspective and dealings with us, um, we, we don't come and just say we need. Um, and unlike a volunteer fire department or first aid squad, which are volunteer organizations that usually exist in town, we have a high rate of turnover. So we try and keep the energy up, and it's important for us to do that so that each successive board each year as people's children age out, right. we keep that enthusiasm there and that tradition alive of continuing to improve. And as I said, we've probably, it, it's exceeded $70,000, the amount of work that we've put into our complex. And it's finally to the point where it's home. You know, there's always a little thing you want to fix here and there or needs to be fixed. But, you know, with us merging, I certainly think it's an opportunity for us to also enhance the experience in that great little park that you guys have here. So please, if you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to leave someone with my, my contact information. Well, you know, I just want to say that, yeah, my kids having gone through Bedminster, uh, Far Hills Little League um, and, and played games at Kiwanis, Kiwanis is a great, mm -hmm. well-maintained field. The uh, snack pavilion you have there is top-notch. Well staffed, a lot of time there. good food. Yes, I have. Um, and and the other That's facilities at the Kiwanis Field, the uh, the bleachers, the fence, they're great. Um, so anything that could be uh, replicated over at Pluckman Park, I, I think, is a benefit. Uh, and just to follow up on what Steve said, you know, we've uh, been talking about shared services for um, quite some time, and we were extremely, extremely supportive of Doug's effort. Uh, it takes a lot to actually vote yourself out of a job. <laughs> and Doug did that. But he did that because it was effective and it was efficient. And frankly, I wish that it had happened earlier because I think the kids, um, uh, my children's age, uh, would have benefited with a larger, more robust Little League system. So I, I think it's fantastic what um, Doug, what you've done and, and what Somerset Hills has thank done by taking us. So well, and, thank and you. And to respond to that, just, and I won't get long in the tooth about this, but we've got restrictions that come down upon us from Little League's uh, Williamsport National Organization as to you know, what the population base of a league can look like. And with um, declining baseball enrollment, with kids playing other sports like lacrosse and soccer, it's really caused for them to take a different look. So what may not have been practical from a shared services standpoint or, or viewed as practical from a shared services standpoint may have not been possible because of the charter restrictions that the Little League Williamsport laid down. So they've softened that a little bit. Understood. I, I won't good. take uh, anything against the prior uh, Little League boards. But it also, you know, it, it serves as an example of, uh, you know, Little League has its own regulations coming from Williamsport. Um, but it's an example of what the townships, mm -hmm. what the municipalities can do, mm -hmm. what Bedminster can do with PPAC Gladstone, what Bedminster can do with Far Hills, what Bedminster can do with Bernardsville. We all feed up to the same school. Our kids are all going to go to school together sooner or later. Absolutely. And the more opportunity for recreation, sports, or other uh, sideline ventures is, is from, you know, from my perspective, better. So, you know, we encourage it and what we can do to work with you, um, you know, I will if support. If you'd like to speak in Santucci, I'd be happy to speak with you there after the meeting or leave my contact Absolutely. information. Absolutely. Now, from an immediate standpoint, mm -hmm. from an idea, I, I don't think we can, with no concrete proposal, sit here and give you an idea of what a long-term agreement could look like on that field. I think that will take some time. And the idea of a long-going commitment, again, you can't do it without pros and cons and what you've got. But I understand what your, the, the initial question was tonight, and we don't have yet a concrete proposal from our rec recreation committee Correct. as far as a fee schedule. But perhaps what we can do is at least consider as a board or as a, as a committee here when and if and what form that comes into us of recommendations for fees, can we at least take into consideration 
the money that is already being put forward and the commitment that's already being forward from a non on a non monetary basis from the little league. So an informal poll, mm -hmm. right? A sense of the committee. Let me just ask the Stacy's the ladies mm -hmm. on now, right? Yeah. Larry's Stacey the alternate. Light, yep. <clears throat> What's the reason for the two thousand dollar fee? And also, I know we talked about this last year during budget time when we were going, mm -hmm. you know, talking to Robin Ray and going into how we can get a little more money out of the system. Uh, this is now, you said that no other field charges you money in the whole system. That's correct. I know we talked about the soccer, Somerset Hill soccer does pay fees to certain fields and that we, you know, decided we would charge them because Bernard's did, something like that. But what's the whole reason behind, reasoning behind this $2,000 fee? Well, just going back just briefly, really, I don't, I have not seen what fee they're proposing for whom or to whom. So there, there has been a back and forth a little bit, um, but really tomorrow night they're talking about it. So there's, I really. There's only been one rec other, meeting. Right. Because the first one got snowed <laughs> out and the second one was on a Tuesday right. okay. and we were in this room and they were in that room. So none of our liaisons actually got to be right. witness to that. So tomorrow really you know, is although somebody right. might have some audio from it, I've heard. Really the beginning, <laughs> yeah, the beginning um, of the discussion as far as I was concerned and then to bring back um, here are the information. So I can answer that maybe after tomorrow evening. Yeah, and, and I can give some color from last year, which was um, raising some revenue, even if it was nominal, to offset some of the municipal expenses in maintaining the fields. And John is nodding his head, and this is something that John and I, I have discussed last year. I remember the discussions last yeah. year during budgeting, but I don't, I don't remember talking about the Little League. I, yeah, I we did, yeah Little League did not come up. It really came up as yeah. soccer. So where did you get it, your it, information? It, yes, it was a letter <clears throat> that Ms. Ray drafted to uh, Mike Valduto referencing the cost for paint. Oh, and was it a, a request for a fee? A, a no, it was a demand. Oh, <laughs> demand. So in other words... You've been asked for the $2,000 fee. Correct. Okay. And, and the point, again, being that fees can only be levied through us mm -hmm. on the elected body. Okay. So, and getting and, a little bit ahead. And, and the soccer situation really came down to field maintenance, improving the fields, the work that would uh, have to go into uh, uh, provide a more level, better grass, better turf. Um, you know, we can ask John about that later, but that really was distinct from the Little League issue. All right. So if we do you want to, however you want to. So let's go around the table. As I think the the question is the question is that for the okay. So in the, so we have all right. Is, you're you're all right. okay. You can. So we've got the scoreboard. It's on the table. Scoreboard is on the table. The maintenance. The, so field maintenance. It blowing. would be. <clears throat> Right, field maintenance, uh, infield, outfield, cut, grass cutting, um, and lining, tilling over the the infield. Uh, what's the Scarif mound? Thank you. A scarifier is something that we're looking to invest in that we would need to house in the shed. In a shed. Um, and that would turn over the infield to keep it fresh, and so you keep the drying agent to a minimum there. Uh, lining of the fields, and then of course we've got things like cutting around the outfield uh, warning track area, the dugout area. The hill, if you can picture the park there, it's it's really tight there. The hill kind of comes right down into the field of play. We're going to need to invest in additional bleachers. We'll have to figure out how that's going to work. Um, but can that's I ask really about electricity for the scoreboard. That's a good question. It's a great question. <laughs> have, uh, have we were looking at the solar power? No, solar I don't know. Power. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think that there's a way to tap in there. I, I thought that with the pavilion, is, Mr. Manns, do you know if there's electric at the pavilion? So we were looking at, t at tapping into that. Okay, and who would provide the electricity? Well, I guess we could put it on a meter. Okay. Um, but you know, we were talking about a very minimal amount with, to run the scoreboard for the several hours a day. Um, but again, I also think that what we're talking about, I mean, we're not locking anybody in the commitments. These are potential, mm -hmm. potential contributions here, and we are, talking about potential fees that have yet been bubbled up. Right, and, 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 to, and to add to what Steve was saying, just to emphasize it, this is something that we look as long-term. We want this to be a long-term happy marriage, and as we come up with more excess funds and then we look to the playground area, I know you had a skate park there. That was ripped up. Mm -hmm. Perfect spot for a batting cage. 
perfect spot, you know, and, and that doesn't just have to be used by the players. If someone else wants to come down and use them, that's, it's there for that as well. We've also got T-ball. Um, we have 20 teams of T-ballers this year, and they don't need a lot of area to set up, so we could actually get, look at getting behind the fence there, a T-ball field, just another use, to just get more foot traffic through there, again, for the sponsors, uh, and just make the park a place, a destination place here in town, some place you want to go. So I, I really think what we're looking at here is just a sense of the committee, an informal poll, and the idea that we are considering weighing these potential commitments for contributions against what would be a potential uh, fee that we might levy should that come before well, us. I would, and, and, yeah. and, just, yeah. and the allowances for the uh, fence signs as opposed to right. the wooden stockade fence, well, not even the stockade fence. Split rail, yeah, right. Split rail fence with the, uh, the rope signs up. This would be a more permanent, a more permanent yeah. fence installation. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Well, Mayor, to answer your question, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the idea of, uh, of um, relinquishing John from from a field maintenance responsibility. Um, I know it's problematic for John in the summertime when he has all these other tasks that are assigned to him. Uh, weather um, becomes a, a real problem. Um, keeping the fields up to a standard what everybody is happy at, um, his resources could be used otherwise. So I guess I'll, I'll throw the, the question to you, Joe, and I think it's, I already know the answer because if Bernardsville's done it, as far as us assigning the maintenance responsibility to a third party, how I'm, I'm sure there's a way that we can craft this for liability purposes with our insurance and GIF. Yeah, that, that would be covered in whatever lease agreement type. I will just call it a lease agreement okay. for this purpose, for, for this discussion. Mm -hmm. But in that lease agreement, we would discuss insurance requirements, hold harmlesses for maintenance, and, and so forth. We, we've, we've done that. But, but and, the, and we provide that year to year. We give a certificate of additional insurer to the townships. So. And Absolutely. Again, this is not completely yeah. baked here. This no. is a proposition. No, but so. to qu answer your question, Mayor, I'll, I'll get to. I, I think what they're offering, or at least it seems that through the course of a season, would far exceed the value of a two thousand dollar fee that we could collect for a couple of pallets of paint. You know, I just think that it's probably more lucrative to the town by you assuming some of these responsibilities. Um, both in time and material and manpower for the town and the taxpayers then trying to collect a, a fee as revenue, solely as revenue. Carolyn? Um, I wanted to say I think it's great that you merged, that you'll be putting improvements into the field. It's wonderful. And that our kids will have a local field to continue playing on. The only concern I have is, um, and I just want to understand this, so please, John, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, but I know with the soccer fields, when we were discussing the budget last year, and we went into great detail on this, we decided that they were going to pay a fee and that we didn't want the parents to do any work on the field because of liability issues. Because I had mentioned that when my husband was on the head of the Somerset Hill Soccer Board years ago, the parents in Bernard's Township did do a lot of the field work. But here, we didn't want that to happen because I'm just, I'm not asking you, I'm just trying to clarify what we discussed last year, but go ahead. No, I was just going to, I was going to actually thank you for raising that point because that's another added benefit for us. Uh, at Bedminster Far Hills, I believe it was our last year, or perhaps the year before, oh, 12 or 13, that was a big issue. Can we get onto the fields? Because we'd have a rain shower come through, Rob would have to call the ball, no pun intended, uh, you know, and a couple hours before game time, and then you'd have a situation where it would stop. And... The, the coaches were frustrated because we could get out there, rake the fields, and play on them. And I fully understand where Mr. Manns is coming from and that, that some people that were doing that didn't know what they were doing, and they were taking the infield dirt and dumping it into the outfield, which is a disaster. Agreed. <laughs> but that's something that we would, you know, we would take charge of that. So you're not going to have to have Robin running around like crazy figuring whether or not to call a game or not we in turn would have the ability to get on there and maintain the fields ourselves. The liability aspect of it would be covered through the insurance and through the lease arrangement. So that actually is, is a headache off of your shoulders and something we're willing to assume. And it gives us more control over, I mean, Saturday morning, we're ready to go at eight o'clock in the morning. And there were times where we had rains on the Friday, it dried out overnight and we didn't have an answer as to whether we could play or not. And it, it created a logistical problem at Kiwanis, 
the league's able to call our own shots in terms of weather. We're looking for the same thing here. Um, so to your point, I think it was actually a win-win. My, my concern was uh, to be consistent. Are we going to be in danger of um, causing a discrepancy or setting a precedent? Is the Somerset Hill Soccer Club now going to come to us and say, we don't want to pay the fee, let us do the work? Ms. Freeman, if I could interject sure. for a moment. Uh, baseball is not a running, pivoting sport to the extent that soccer and lacrosse are. And one of the things that was challenging to our league a number of years ago was being looped in with the football team using the, the fields at the polo ground or with soccer and the maintenance issues that came from that, the seating and so forth. Um, baseball does not put the stress on a field that other sports do. Mm -hmm. We don't require, we, yep. we need two lines. Yeah. Two foul poles to home now I grew up next to a baseball, <laughs> big, <laughs> big town baseball field. So yeah. it's, it's, it's an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, That's those true. sports have their nuances, they also have their maintenance concerns. Mm -hmm. Uh, baseball is different. We, I can tell you that we do try and minimize the amount of drying agents we use because too much uh, hardens the clay. Mm -hmm. So it becomes additional work for us. Mm -hmm. um, but it, we, we have a, a maintenance program, as loose as it may seem, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we maintain the quality of the clay, the quality of the grass, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, my son played baseball in, in Bernard's Township for many years. and. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up, that, uh, that we're not going to put ourselves in a position where the soccer and the other sports where we charge a fee for the fields aren't going to say, well, now we don't want to pay this we fee because they don't pay. We have other fields that they care about the league. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the other mm -hmm. sports people, for example, for their background and talking to West Park Field, but they're going to be utilizing those fields. Mm -hmm. so Oh, I, I would agree. I, I don't I don't want to throw them under the bus and say, why would they come up with this? Because I think they're doing exactly what they believe that the five of us want. Just so you know that we, we do take some of these mm -hmm. funds that we do get from that, and we do manage it as a revenue source and budget. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We, we do have that grant that we want. So, um, so we are tax investors when it comes to this money. They bring dollars. This would probably only be a benefit to the charity that we're working for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doug, how many other? It's not the first time I heard you say that. How many other fields do you think sure. this season you'll be utilizing? <clears throat> Last year we used Pluckman Park. We used the school field at the cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. We used uh, River, uh, all three River Road fields, and we used one, the one field at Miller, which would be you know there's the large diamond there, the mm -hmm. the one to the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doug, what did you pay last year? Did you pay anything? We did, we made a donation of a thousand dollar, a thousand dollar donation, and we supply the Port of John for Miller. Okay. Oh, I support this uh, idea. Stacy. I support it. I'm really glad you came here tonight and talked to us uh, just in time, and um, we'll definitely work with you. Okay. I'm in support of the idea. I I do as well, but I would also caution you that. We, we, what we need to do is really dig into this further and come up with all the, all the little questions and get them answered for, for the much bigger picture so that you can have send that check through to get the scoreboard. And uh, so we can have, uh, I would love to have a field as nice as uh, the one down in Bernardsville. And I know that that's what the Little League parents want as well. So thank you for saying that. Just, just so the record is clear that, um, Robin did not know of what's going on in Pluckman because I did not have a chance to walk. That's, so I will take another, some responsibility on that. That's another right? reason why 
informally I asked you to come here tonight because this allows it to get on the record. And again, the folks at the rec meeting last time, they had, they've only had one rec meeting since they've reorganized this year, and it was the same night as the township committee. So, you know, yes, there's been a lot of uh, missed opportunity for communication to get around. So, again, I do not want to anybody walking out thinking that we're throwing the rec committee under the bus because not at all. Yep. they are doing what they think we are expecting of them. But sometimes uh, things You know, cross. I just want to point out that um, if these numbers still bear out, that last year uh, Robin had brought in more money from field fees than in prior years, and, and the $1,000 donation would not have changed that. Um, right. So let Robin keep doing what she's doing, uh, which is, is trying to offset John's expenses. Mm -hmm. But as we get uh, a field fee proposal, I believe this body ought to consider the sweat equity as donation also. And uh, all right. Thank you very much for your time. Oh. They share the parking lot. Good point. That's another good point. Mm -hmm. I do believe that Robin has already scheduled some other activities for that area. Maybe the you know some commercial rental of that field. There may be different different things that have already been put in place for this year. Yeah, we're we're aware of that. And again, you know, we're not looking to be users to the exclusion of everyone else. Okay. We're certainly looking to to uh, you know be good partners. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry, I Thank took over you. three minutes. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I think you might have exceeded your three minutes. Uh, is there anyone else that has uh, would like to make a public comment at this time? Please, the floor is open. Mayor, right. I believe the rec meeting is Wednesday night, correct? Uh, no, it Judy? is tomorrow. It is tomorrow, tomorrow. night? Okay. I just want to make sure before I misspoke. It is tomorrow. All right. We move on to monthly uh, report discussions by subcommittees. I will start as usual with Mr. Payne. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Certificate of Achievement from the Suburban Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. Uh, this is to Bedminster Township. I, I picked this up last week at the Joint Insurance Fund uh, breakfast for completing 100% of the 2013 Safety Incentive Program and for reducing, reducing their lost time frequency by 10% over the past three-year average or maintaining an incident rate of below two. And that's to... Um, Bedminster Township, and with this uh, was uh, $1,100 in incentives that were um, that the town will be receiving, and uh, I know we can put that money to good use, right? So yeah. that's it. Carolyn, I uh, just one announcement from a Somerset Hills Youth Services and Municipal Alliance. The United Way is offering free tax preparation for people up until April 15th. They're also assisting families with the FAFSA, that's the form, as part of the tax preparation process. Um, if they want help, they need to go to the United Way office in Bridgewater or at Raritan Valley Community College. That's it. Mr. Jacobs. No comments. Ms. Santucci. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, March 11th, uh, we had our open space meeting. And uh, March 30th will be our open space tour that we have annually to look at our open space properties. Uh, we're looking to have Beth Davison come in and speak with the group as well as the public about some preservation opportunities as well as uh, our open space. I know Judy mentioned the Raritan Headwaters cleanup on April 26th. Yep. Correct. Um, and the Recreation Committee meets tomorrow at 7 p.m. <laughs> Good. As we talked about before. Good. Um, I have uh, three things just to mention. Uh, one, since we are in public forum, uh, I, did, I do not want to miss the opportunity to formally thank and recognize and tip our hat to uh, Pat Ussery, Chief Ussery, who uh, we had a nice luncheon for him on Friday, and uh, we, gave him a, we uh, presented him with a proclamation and another very special farewell gift with some balloons attached to it. But uh, 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 Pat uh, has uh, served honorably for what, 28, 29 years? in this town and uh, cannot say enough good things about him. We tried to wish him well Friday, as uh, dry-eyed as we possibly Some could. Some of us got teared up, I'm sorry. But, uh, but just as uh, he and Kathy head off to bigger and better things, we, uh, 
we thank them for, for everything they've done for Bedminster. And know that uh, in the interim, we are in very capable hands uh, with, Mr. with Lieutenant Meyer. So um, last Wednesday, I was down in Trenton and I attended the League of Municipalities Mayor's Legislative Day. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Guardano spoke. Uh, we also had a roundtable of several mayors, including uh, Senate President Sweeney, uh, Assembly Speaker Prieto, and some other members of the uh, Assembly and the State Senate. What did I get out of that is that shared services are here to stay. And that was right out of the mouth of uh, uh, State Senator Sweeney. Um, it ain't going to get any better. And uh, it, is, it is towns, I think now, after three years of uh, the 2% cap, are really starting to feel the pain, the pain that we felt already for three years plus. And uh, you're not going to see much relief from the uh, legislature on this. One of the big things that got brought up is something that if you read about in the papers, is everybody wanted to know if the uh, salary arbitration cap would get extended because that is coming around on April the 1st. And everybody on the dais nodded their head, Assembly Speaker Prieto and Steve Sweeney. It hasn't happened yet. So we'll stay tuned. Uh, but uh, I, for one, hope that uh, they find their way to do that. The mayor, real fast, on uh, shared services, I, I forgot to mention something to you, John. I know we've talked about STAB and their willingness to uh, let us tap into that generator. So um, their next meeting is in April, um, and all they're going to be looking for me is some type of uh, usage or demand, electrical demand numbers, which I think are going to be minimal, but I have to give them something. So, you know, in between plowing and repairing all our roads, if you <laughs> Just to be able to figure out the demand. We know I, did, did I did get, uh, I did discuss that with uh, Paul Farrell. He gave me the name of uh, a local electrical engineer that he's worked with on projects uh, for this type of mm -hmm. review. He said it would only take an hour or two of his time. Okay. Excellent. And also, even though we still have a large amount of stuff to, to talk about tonight, I do want to delve into something that has uh, seems to have gotten a life of its own through uh, emails over the past week or so. Um, this body in coming up with our budget numbers, and that will be at least uh, uh, introduced tonight, uh, we looked at the Turtle Tunnel project on River Road, and there was a potential for an $180,000 grant from the federal government that was out there upon unpeeling the onion further. It was determined that the qualifications was, what, about a 23-page booklet? Mm -hmm. And as you started opening up that booklet and looking at questions, that became fairly obvious that we would not qualify. Um, and even if we did qualify, it also became fairly obvious that the money that would come out of our pockets from the Bedminster uh, taxpayers would exceed significantly the amount of money that if we took on the project and just did it ourselves. And so this governing body made that decision several weeks ago in one of our budget work sessions. Um, the folks from the New Jersey Fish and Game and the Audubon Society in concert with the folks uh, out at Montclair State College had a study that they wished to do in concert with this program, or at least as this program was going through, and they made a presentation, I believe back in January, to the uh, Environmental Commission and Open Space Commission, which held a joint meeting. And February they, 11th. February 11th. I'm sorry. I thought it was, okay, earlier this year. Um, thank you. And they made a presentation about what they wanted to do with the study, and they came up with a March 15th date to have a uh, education session for volunteers that wish to take part in this wildlife study. Um, I spoke with John Park from uh, Audubon, and he passed along to Mr. Zarati that they had a lot of expectations with the idea that we would get $180,000 and maybe that would allow the town to do a bunch of things in concert with that study. 
we're not getting a grant, and if you've seen the work that uh, DPW has had to do lately through the winter, we A, don't have the money, and B, don't have the manpower to have John Mance's folks be devoted to putting up silt fences and digging holes and doing a lot of the legwork that this uh, college study uh, required. But it in no way meant that we wanted to get in the way of that study. And I was surprised when they uh, uh, canceled the, uh, the uh, training day for Saturday. But they did. And uh, again, I will reiterate that Bedminster Township is going to live up to our obligation and put the turtle tunnels in, as we've all discussed through the budget. Um, if the Montclair State study or another study would like to come to reality and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, be performed, I don't know that we've ever had any inclination to see it go away or to get in the way of, a, of such a study. We simply cannot devote tax resources, Bedminster taxpayer resources, to doing legwork for a college uh, study. So we were willing to let them use this building and be cheerleaders for them and, and see if there was any way we could help uh, convince people to volunteer for such a program. And if it does continue, I think we would still continue to support those uh, efforts. But we just cannot do it using taxpayer dollars. So I just wanted to say that in public. Does anybody have anything they wish to add or? Okay. Having said that, let's move on to Ms. Sullivan, Administrator's Report. Um, you do not have a written report from me. However, I have a few quick comments. Um, one is JCP&L, with the help of the Lewis Tree Service, will be out and about beginning April 1st doing additional tree trimming. Um, I have a map if anyone is really interested, but Hillside Avenue is... They've tagged... Okay. They they're they're coming around, property. either knocking on doors to talk to the property owner or putting doorknob hangers to let you know of their intentions, and they do have to get uh, some sort of permission or communication with all the property owners. So they're doing that now, and they hope to start on April 1st. So I have maps of every place they're going if anybody wants to know. Um, we are having a, uh, it's no secret, we're having a shared court uh, meeting tomorrow with members from AOC and PPAC Gladstone and ourselves at 1 o'clock here tomorrow to review where we are with that shared court proposal. Um, Mayor, I believe you're going to be there at 1 o'clock? I will be there. Okay, yes, good. So I will. Um, I'll be there as well. Oh, you oh, you can come too? Good. And one last thing I have. Um, oh, yeah. also a local historian. Um, it's a beautiful map of the various estates back in uh, the 1800s through uh, 1939 of the actual estate names. Um, Dunlop Farm, Brady Estates, all the different properties throughout the whole township. It's, you could sit and look at this map for hours mm -hmm. just reading all the information that's on there. Um, Mr. Smith donated his house, which I well, he was here today. I, I thanked him. I wanted to show him writing. But um, I thought it might be a great idea to put this up in our lobby as opposed to here in the meeting room. Um, I think it would get better exposure in our lobby area for the public. But we'll have to show it to him and see what he thought. If he wanted it to be in this room or in some other location. But um, this well, is a beautiful place. Uh, it, it's incredible, um, and when we do hang it, maybe we could invite him to come and get some pictures, and you know, of us, you know, a formal presentation he, to he the. He was here today, and he said he, his latest project is doing a similar one, concentrating just on puppies. Mm. So um, we have them in other areas throughout. He's taking this on himself to do this. This is yeah. this is what he does. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. But it is just an amazing uh, thing. He he gave me a little sign that I told I would post with it as far as his mm -hmm. donation. Um, but if you have no mm -hmm. objection, um, I wanted to have John Fox put this up in the lobby. Um, when you come in by our tax office, there's 
a hallway right there where the space is. The uh, floor plan is so we're uh, monitoring mm -hmm. the kiosk space on that hallway. Is it so past <coughs> past the doors? Inside the lobby, next to the tax window. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great idea. Yeah. Has it been framed to be preserved and airtight and all yeah, that? Yeah, he, he presented it. It's all about glass. It's so it'll, it won't age. Great. Wow, that's great. No, we're, we're very fortunate that uh, John Smith contributes on the Historic Preservation Committee. He is just an eminent authority on the history of the Somerset Hills, and uh, please thank him for, for all of us for uh, that amazing donation. Well, anyway, this will be... Yeah. Oh, and my, we're going to introduce the budget this evening. I'm going to do my actual budget proposal. I only finalized the numbers. I was on the phone with the auditor today, getting some of the last minute things completed. Um, I hope to do my presentation on um, a, the next meeting on April 7th. Okay. Thank you. Uh, discussion on introduced ordinances scheduled for public hearing. Don't we have a, we do have one ordinance for public hearing tonight, and that would be uh, ordinance 2014-002. That is an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriations limits and to establish a cap bank. Sounds worse than it is. It is <laughs> simply to <laughs> allow us to establish a cap bank. It does not uh, indicate that we have exceeded the cap this in this year. Uh, can I get a motion to open the public hearing for 2014-02? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, is there any member of the public that would wishes to comment on ordinance 2014-002? Seeing none, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. You're ahead of me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I get a motion? Do I have any comments or questions from the committee? Uh, the only question, Mayor, or not question, but comment is, uh, just so it's on the record, it's ca for calendar year 2013. Does calendar year 2013 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation? And then... Um, it actually gives gives the amount of the increase in the final appropriations, which I guess are going towards the cap. Yeah, cap bank from last year. It's from last year's right, what we right, didn't right. use, right? Right, use. right. So that's 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 just, why you have the if, those are the numbers. Bank, right. Now, whether we actually intend to use it or not, that's really not the issue. But we're it's just that we have the availability we're moving to do it so. To the cap bank. Right, right. we carry it forward for right. three years. Okay. All right, can I get a motion on ordinance 2014-002? So moved. Second. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Parker? Aye. Thank you. We have three resolutions on the consent agenda tonight. One is 2014-042, authorizing the refund of tax overpayments. Comments or questions? If not, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, this would be a roll call vote. Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Parker? Aye. Resolution 2014-043, authorizing a sewer bill adjustment. Can any, any comments or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Um, this would, again, be another roll call vote. Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Parker? Aye. Thank you. Resolution 2014-044, since the budget has not been adopted yet, this is a, uh, it's called an emergency temporary appropriations, but we're simply moving money ahead of having an actual budget in place. Does anyone have a comment or question on 044? If not, I will take a motion. So moved. Second. Again, roll call vote. Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Park? Aye. Thank you. All right, we have two regular resolutions. Well, resolutions 2014-040, authorizing the appointment of a substitute part-time inspector for the construction department. And as you well know, uh, they've been busy. And we have an appointment there. 
Does anybody have any comments or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call vote again, Ms. Freeman. Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Park? Aye. Thank you. Resolution 2014-041. All the I's dotted and the T's crossed. This is an ordinance uh, appointing uh, Craig Meyer as officer in charge as uh, we await uh, the uh, selection process for a permanent chief in Bedminster. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Again, roll call vote. Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Parker? Aye. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> More work. There you go. <laughs> well, we're lucky to have someone qualified to step right in, so thank you. Okay. 2014-045 uh, is the municipal budget. And what do you want to do? Or are we just going to do we just want to simply? Uh... This is just a simple introduction. Um, there is a resolution in front of you that doesn't really give you any numbers. Um, it's just a listing of when uh, it will be noticed in the paper, when it will be actually have a public hearing, which will be on April 21st. Um, do you, you do have a packet in your <coughs> folder of a lot of the particulars about the budget, a uh, very short summary. If you wanted to mention anything, it's certainly up to you. Um, my formal presentation will be at the next meeting. Um, the appropriations um, themselves actually came in at 1.23% over last year. Um, the actual amount to be raised by taxes actually came in with a lot of discussion uh, at 2.9%. So are we doing a resolution tonight, or are we simply introducing it? It by is ordinance? a resolution, a little bit different than normal, but it is a resolution to introduce the budget, yes. Any comments or questions? And Judy, the, the numbers that you plugged in for the county um, and the school? The uh, county and the school are estimates right, at 2%. Um, the we don't know what the school or the county will be at this time. Okay. The school, as we speak tonight, the school is introducing theirs. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, can I get a motion on 2014-045? So moved. Second. Second. And again, this is a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Parker? Aye. Thank you. Approval of the bill list. Can I get an approval of the bill list pending the approval of individual invoices? So moved. Second. Roll call vote, Ms. Freeman? Aye. Mr. Jacobs? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Payne? Aye. Ms. Santucci? Aye. Mayor Parker? Aye. Uh, new business, old business. We don't have anything under old business. Is there any new business that someone would like to bring before us? Okay. If not, we will move on to our second round and the final round of public comments. We get a second bite at the apple. Anybody wishes to make a comment, please come to the microphone. State your name, where you live, so it'll be on the record, the audio record. Seeing none, let's move on to Township Committee comments. Let's go with Ms. Santucci this time. Just to, sure. Sure. Just to, sure. Just to, just to shake I'd like to congratulate uh, Lieutenant Meyer. Thank you very much, and thank everybody for coming here tonight, and I think it was really a successful meeting, and I'm glad that everybody feels like they can come here and be heard. So, thank you. Mr. Jacobs. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Meyer. And uh, Joe, we look forward to hearing from you or uh, John on the uh, pilot issue. Mm -hmm. That's it. Ms. Freeman. Ditto what you said. Thank you <laughs> for being willing, ready, and able to serve. <laughs> and um, Thanks for stepping into the big <laughs> shoes. And, um, but I also want to uh, commend and thank my colleagues. Um, I know we didn't get into the actual budget numbers or anything tonight, but uh, we put a lot of work into it. There was a lot of back and forth, and uh, um, I think when the, the public does see the, the budget ultimately um, and they look at the numbers, I think they're going to realize what we did too is we did what was in the best interest of, of Bedminster 
Um, no one likes to raise taxes. I mean, we're all taxpayers ourselves, but I think uh, we set out with our goals to maintain the excellent level of services uh, that we have in our town. We took care of the future for building surplus, uh, capital improvements. Uh, we didn't do it by borrowing a lot of money. We're paying off our debt in a timely manner. I think we're being, in that a aspect, being very fiscally responsible. Um, and, um, and we did it, and I think people will realize the value that they're getting for the, the tax dollars. So I want to just thank everybody for all the work they put into it. And I would encourage folks to come out and see the full presentation at our next meeting. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.